Chinatown International District, the CID, is one of Seattle's last remaining cultural gems. It holds so much more than what meets the eye. Diverse businesses and members who deeply care about and help create the neighborhood's unique past, present, and future. The CID's rich legacy bursts with potential and continues to fight to exist as a healthy community with cultural dignity. We welcome you to look through a different mirror, community building and resilience in Seattle's Chinatown International District. Well, my father started this restaurant in 1974. Uh, he had another restaurant, the original Cow Cow was uh, down in downtown Seattle. That one opened in, I believe, 1958. You know, back then we used to either have to go to California or up to Vancouver to get really good barbecues. So uh, he and his brother decided, oh, let's open a, a barbecue restaurant here. The Cow Cow is, uh, is very, is, is basically is a Hawaiian name. And it's this cow cow mean good food and you or know to or to eat. So if you go to Hawaii, you always see a lot of cow cow. And sometimes you're wondering, you know, how we got our name. But cow cow is uh, the name come from my my father in law. So Lynn is fifth generation of Hawaiian. Uh, you know, her grandfather, great great grandfather. Great grandfather worked that, in the sugar cane field. Sugar cane field, yeah. So that's how they got the name. My father in law got the name of at the time when he started the restaurant. So he said, hmm, you know, that's the, it's, it's their roots. So they said, cow cow. And it sounds good, you know, in Chinese is uh, chow chow. So that means good food. So it kind of have a good ring to it. So that's how the name come about, cow cow. Restaurant was, uh, was, uh, was in my blood because my family also owned a, a restaurant a long time ago. And so uh, originally I'm from Vietnam. And uh, so, and uh, from elementary school, I met Lynn. You know, we got married, and uh, when my father-in-law, uh, Wei Ying, decided to retire, and so we, I kind of, you know, switch uh, profession, and in, instead of engineering, I come to manage a restaurant. I think he really originally wanted my brother and I to take over, but my brother, after working here for years, said, no, restaurant business is not for me. I want weekends off, I want vacations and all that, so um, maybe I'm the dumb one, but I was like, okay. Um, I didn't want to see my dad's baby, you know, die or be sold, so this one's like, hey, why not? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, my father-in-law was pretty tough on me. He was really, <laughs> he was really tough on me. Uh, <laughs> he was pretty tough. He probably finally said, okay, you guys are doing okay after what, five years? Yeah, <laughs> about five years, yeah. yeah. It was pretty tough. Yeah. He sit here and <laughs> analyze everything and he just said, you guys not doing this right. <laughs> you guys are not going to make it. Yeah. So he criticized every little detail, every little detail. The table was not clean. Uh, you know, treat people wasn't, you know, the people you, the, the worker need to do this and do this. You need to be on the boss side. You need to be on the uh, customer side. And uh, so it was pretty tough. It was pretty tough on me. Yeah, it was tough on me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was really tough on me. So that was great with me. <laughs> yeah. One thing we are very proud of is all the worker that work for us. Every single one of their kids is all graduated from college. So that's something that we are very proud of. Um, and doing well, doing better than us. <laughs> <laughs> so they have a lot easier life uh, for them and didn't have to work in the restaurant business anymore. And you know, we have people work for us for over 40 years, 60 years, so that's a long time. Uh, we still have, you know, Uncle, Uncle Bob, I call him Uncle Bob, he still work for us and he's 90, 93 this year. I didn't steal the hard work in them that if they see us work like 10 hours, 12 hours, you know, uh, to start the business at the time, and their grandfather worked 17 hours a day, you know, 16 hours a day, and hopefully they will learn something from that. Hopefully they will feel, you know, if they could do it, we could do it. Really heartwarming to see the new generation come in. They always tell us uh, their family history coming here. A lot of people, uh, still remember when I was a little girl, watching me grow up, watching me 
date this guy, <laughs> going for getting pregnant and all that stuff. So it's kind of cool to see now, you know, uh, our new, our customers also watching them grow up. As a as a community, I think uh, our our restaurant is very diversified. We see a lot of different type of people that came through here, and uh, which is exactly what we want to do. So everybody have a chance to know what Cow Cow is all about, and everybody deserves to have good barbecue items. You know, our ducks, our barbecue pork, our roast pork is one of the, you know, I don't consider, I don't always say, you know, I'm the best, but I think the customer always tell us, you guys are the best. For whatever culture it is, Vietnamese, Chinese, Filipino, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. It's, 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 you know, if you have a common goal like uh, food, I, I mean, we, we're in the restaurant business, so I can only talk about food. But I think mean, food is one of the things that put, bring everything's family together. You know? you know, the Chinese always have a tradition, right? Chinese New Year, Thanksgiving in America, that's something we, everybody come back together in the, on the family table and talk about what they did the year before and share about their joy, you know, uh, sadness, happiness, you know, whatever that might be, but the family is very important and it starts with a house, first start in a home, start with their food, culture, that's important. So, you know, at the beginning of time, I think my father-in-law just kind of say, hey, can you take the, the turkey for us for Thanksgiving? And uh, he said, sure, we'll do our best. And now, you know, and then that's becoming a, a tradition. And so now every year that Thanksgiving, we cook about 70 to 120 turkey the last couple of years. And it's overwhelmed, you know, for the people to work. I mean, you know, we cook all day, all night, just to get, it, get, get the turkey to people to have a, a good Thanksgiving dinner. But when the customer pick up our turkey, they're so happy. You know, they, they share with the family as a, as a tradition of the American tradition, but in a Chinese twist. One of the main reasons that we, or I stay in the community, um, in Chinatown, in this location, because everyone is always calling, or every time they come in, oh, why don't you open a branch up north, down south, in the east side, and we're just like, no, we're here, we're going to always be here. Um, I think it's because my father loved this community. He he really did. He invested in this community. He's been here for years. He's uh, one of the first to uh, renovate one of the older buildings in this area. Um, I mean, he really devoted his life to this community. And I think because of that, uh, I just want to stay here to keep his memory alive. In his life. For me, I think it's important to have a community like this in any part of the world, not only in Seattle, but Los Angeles, New York, whatever. And I think it's every, every culture is different. And I think it's important to have a root to look back on. So I think this community will survive, and I hope people will, the next generation of Asian, not only Chinese, it could be Filipino, it could be you know, Japanese, it could be uh, whatever. Just bring back, not just take everything from the community, but bring back something to the community volunteers, whatever like you guys are doing right now, you know, making this document, I think it's extremely important to keep this going because uh, sometimes we forget where we come from. You know, during this pandemic and we had to close down and then there were, you know, fears of writing and groups came in and put up panels for us and painted murals. I thought that was so cool to see people volunteering and helping us. Um, and keeping us safe. I thought that was really, really a nice and cool thing. Nowadays, the world is totally different. I mean, it's, it's so much, uh, so much hate, not enough passion, not enough love. And for the next generation, for my kids, for your kids, always need to know that, you know, this is the root and you could always come back, this is home. And I think that's the most important message that I could send out to the community for now.